build a network. Let's talk about cables. We've got copper cable, fiber optic cable. Let's talk about copper cable. We've got a couple different types. We've got Cat 5E, we got Cat 6, and we got Cat 6A. Those are the three that you're gonna be most commonly running into. If you run into anything that sounds really crazy or like, what's the difference between this and this? The one that is the weird one is not officially recognized as part of the standard uh, set forth by the TIA, EIA uh, for these cabling requirements. CAT 5E is your general use gigabit network cable. You're gonna find it pretty much everywhere. It is rated and tested up to 100 megahertz. Uh, and it is, and that's, a, that's the electrical signals that are being sent down the line. That's what I talk about when I say megahertz. Uh, each of these cables is made up of eight conductors. There are eight wires, each separated into four pairs. Each pair is wound together in a spiral, kind of like a piece of DNA. It's just twisted together. Uh, we call this unshielded twisted pair. In this case, it has no shielding, hence it's unshielded and the twisted pairs because it's four pairs of wire twisted together. It sounds pretty straightforward, you think about it. Now, the difference between UTP, which is unshielded twisted pair, and STP, which is shielded twisted pair, is that shielded twisted pair has a foil uh, shield, very similar to how a uh, coax cable has a shielding that runs down the length of the cable. It's usually on the outside, uh, and you've got your conductor in the center, and then you get your shielding on the outside. It's usually used for grounding, bleeding off excess energy, uh, and it's not necessary for the most part in most of your network installations. Uh, so interior and most places you're gonna have UTP. It's cheaper, you'll be fine. The requirements for CAT6 are a little bit higher than CAT5, uh, CAT5E. Uh, it's gonna be better in large bundles of cable uh, running through your office or your home. So if you have big bundles of cable, we're talking like 50, 100, 150 cables all in a big bundle, all bound together, CAT6 is going to be uh, more reliable than CAT5E. Doesn't mean that CAT5E is not reliable, it's just that it means the standards are set a little higher. Uh, CAT6A is, was created as a way of running 10 gig over copper, as opposed to running 10 gig over fiber uh, or gigabit over copper. In order to do 10 gig over copper, they had to make some pretty crazy leaps and bounds. Now, at the time CAT6A was created, there was another cable called CAT7. CAT7 was shielded only, and it had a very special type of connector, uh, and it was all around uh, kind of uh, convoluted in how you had to install it. Each pair was individually shielded. The, con the connector at the end was different. Normally you deal with a 8P AC or an RJ45 connector, as it's more commonly known. There is a difference, but most people, if you say RJ45, you'll know what you're talking about. Uh, the, the CAT7 connector used a what they call a GG45, and it was not a good game. It, it was a little more convoluted to use in many anyway, Tangent, but CAT7 is more or less deprecated at this point because CAT6A replaced it as a better solution, a cheaper solution, and a uh, just all around better solution. It's actually got a higher rating than CAT7 ever did. Again, generally CAT5E is used pretty much everywhere. CAT6 is also used everywhere, but you're more likely to need or want to use it if you're doing large installations with huge bundles of cable uh, because they will less likely interfere with the other connect, uh, the other cables in the same bundle. And CAT, uh, CAT6A, you would want to use if you're running 10 gig, uh, or if you're really, really adamant about making sure you have uh, no real crosstalk. Though, if you're gonna go that far, you might as well just start running fiber optic lines, which are ridiculously expensive, and uh, can be a lot more convoluted when it comes to uh, terminating or running the connector from one location or another. Usually you use fiber optic as your backbone to any given network. Uh, this is yellow, this, was a, this is a piece of uh, single mode. Uh, they're not specifically color coded, but you generally find them color coded, where like this is an aqua cable, this is multi-mode, this is single mode. The difference between single mode and multi-mode is both the diameter of the core 
and the kind of light that is designed to pass from one end to the other. So multi-mode has got multi-modes of light. You can go and look that up. That's a, it's a little bit more convoluted than I want to get into right now. Uh, but it's generally referred to as the short uh, fiber optic line uh, because it is designed for shorter runs uh, anywhere between 100 meters to uh, 500 meters. You can get up to 1,000 meters, but that gets uh, that's specific types of transceivers and specific, uh, a very specific type of, of multi-mode fiber. Where single mode is designed for really long distances, really long distances. When I mean really long, I mean anywhere from a kilometer or a thousand meters all the way up to 40 kilometers with the right transceiver and the right cable, you can run a fiber optic line for 40 kilometers. So if you lived in a farmland in the middle of nowhere and you wanted to uh, share your network and or your internet with your neighbor, you can just get a piece of direct burial armored fiber lines and run it from your house to his house or her house and you will have a, a network connection between the two links. All right, that's uh, your basic run over for, for cables. Uh, we'll go into a much more detailed explanation of copper connections, uh, how to terminate them, and things that you want to look for in the where you want to install it, such as the difference between regular PVC, or regular or PVC and plenum, the difference between riser cable and uh, well, riser and plenum, uh, horizontal and vertical cabling is just more of industry terms. It's not specific about the kind of cable you're using, uh, but there are certain legal requirements when running in certain locations and types of office buildings or in uh, in your home, uh, and that's where you get plenum versus non-plenum coming in. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's it for right now. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Cables with Kane. Uh, if you like these kinds of videos, you can always uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment down below, ask a question. I'm usually available to answer questions. Uh, you can like, uh, check me out on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, I've got a Twitch channel that I, I sometimes play games. Every now and again, you'll see something like this uh, that kind of happens, and we'll go into a much more in-depth, interactive uh, explanation of some crazy things like uh, cables, conductors, and uh, lasers. Until, uh, until then, my name is Kane. And I'm here to help you.